Hey everyone, welcome to my channel, it's me GamerTorque and this is my Sonic Forces Demo Opinions video. Heck, let, let's call it the third episode of my Road to Sonic Forces series. Why not? It, it fits. Anyway, for those of you who don't know, yesterday Japan got a Sonic Forces demo for the Nintendo Switch Japanese eShop. Shortly after, which translates to earlier today for us in the Western world, Japanese PlayStation Store received its version of Sonic Forces demo as well. The main difference is, PlayStation demo is running at a 1080p 60fps compared to the 720 to 30fps on the Switch. Another big difference that us Westerners will surely appreciate is the fact that while Switch version was in complete Japanese, the PlayStation 4 version is completely English, so we, we can actually understand the dialogues in the game. I went ahead and created a Japanese PSN account to get my hands on the demo and already have a non-commentary playthrough of it on my channel featuring Modern Sonic, Classic Sonic and The Avatar. You can click on the icon on the upper right corner to check that out, but this will be my opinions video. First things first, let's get some rumors out of the way. This is a demo and it is understandable that a demo is not a complete product. For some reason many people seem to be missing that point and have decided to rip the demo a new one by complaining about the lack of idle animations in the demo. Shortly after the outcry we have been tweeted some pictures of the idle animations from a Japanese Twitter account so no need to freak out. Second thing I want to address is the linear stage design controversy that people seem to be having issues with. Yes, Green Hill Zone and Spaceport are indeed quite linear. But remember one thing. These are the stages that have tutorial pop-ups telling you how to jump and how to do homing attack, how to boost these stages, much like the Green Hill Zone in Generations or Windmill Isle in Unleashed, are made for people who are not familiar with Sonic. You have to understand, a majority of non-Sonic players out there can't even manage to time their jumps right when going at the speeds Sonic is going. Just have a look at the game explain guys. I don't wanna throw any shit their way, but it is outright obvious the guy is having issues with the boost controls and the timing of his moves. It's not like the Cuphead tutorial shitstorm levels of bad, nowhere near, but it tells you enough which kinds of people Sonic Team target with their demos. These are not stages that require the full concentration of a resident Sonic player, but more of a stage for the non-Sonic players to get used to the concepts. Do you want those players to pick a path out of three different options while they can't even boost and jump at the same time? No, of course not, they wouldn't be able to do anything. Despite that, the very simple Green Hill Zone offers multiple pathways on multiple occasions as well as sections that you can time your jumps right to save time. But before talking about individual stages, I must mention the demo is locked to a 1 minute per stage, which I have to say is an absolutely terrible decision that I do not like at all. Once you enter a stage, you have a minute before you are thrown back into the main menu. Some people have managed to complete the modern Sonic stage right when the timer runs out, but I don't think we will be getting similar results for classic and custom character stages. Now, Sonic T. If you want to limit what we can see in the demo, just limit the stage itself. Bring the gold ring closer so we won't see what's at the end of the stage. Give me a side act maybe that is relatively short instead of a main act if you don't want me seeing the end of it. But do not limit my freaking playtime. It is incredibly frustrating no matter how many times you see the screen fade to black because the timer ran out. Anyways, let's start talking about the stages in general. I think I already got my opinions about the modern Green Hill Zone out there. It is pretty linear, but despite being that, it offers multiple pathways for you to take advantage of. And I'm not entirely sure why the linear stage topic has grown so much out of proportion these last couple of years. Sure, I don't enjoy running through corridors all the time as well, much like you, and the overall atmosphere could have felt more open with the correct art design or stage design, despite being linear as a stage, but does every game have to be an open world game? Well, I don't like the way Green Hill Zone is feeling so confined due to certain elements like the baby bumpers on the sides, 
but I never saw anybody complain about platformers being linear in any other game. Even Sonic Adventure 1, as open as it felt thanks to its open atmosphere, was a pretty damn linear game in terms of level design and where you could go as Sonic. Sonic doesn't need to be put in a sandbox as a stage like Super Mario 64, he operates on a much different gameplay style. An open world may benefit certain platformers, it doesn't benefit much for a series like Sonic because Sonic works more as an obstacle course than a traditional platformer. If you don't like linearity in a Sonic game, maybe it's time to think if Sonic is your jam after all. You may have much more fun with other platformers with a core concept that can actually work with an open world environment. But let's not get ahead of ourselves, not everything is amazing of course. I cannot say if this is because we're playing the tutorial stage or if the whole game will be like this, but it feels like the game is holding your hand a little bit too much. When going through the straight initial path, the game constantly tries to pull Sonic back into the center of the path. This was present in certain areas of generations as well, but those areas were extremely curvy sections that you yourself couldn't possibly deal with it at those speeds even when not boosting. So there were invisible pushers at the edges that tried smoothing your curves. But in this stage I felt like it was overkill. In such a long curve that I could easily navigate through myself, I most certainly didn't need baby bumpers centering me every single time of my steps. The game supposedly will feature a difficulty selection and I'm hoping this is something adjustable much like the brake assist function on many racing games out there. I don't have a problem with the automation to be perfectly honest, much like other boost games it is no more automated than the classic games are and are used as a warning sign to shift your focus from one section to the other, a philosophy that hasn't changed since 1991, uh, no matter how much the classic fans claim it has changed so much and it is so much worse. But as expected from a boost game, backtracking is at an impossible state. Some of you may ask, why, why would you want to backtrack? Your objective is to finish the stage as fast as possible, no? My answer is... I don't know, but I know some people exclusively have a problem with this issue, so I may as well inform them that nothing has changed on that aspect. I do not have a problem with backtracking being impossible. I need to go forward, and I will be going forward. Sonic feels a little bit more refined in terms of gameplay, but much like Sonic Adventure 2 being a more refined Sonic Adventure 1, I am going to leave that up to you for your own interpretation. It has positives as much as it has negatives. So far, double jump, homing attack, slide, quick step and stomp do make a return. Air dash is not present for those times when you don't have any boost energy, which is saddening because it, it was a really helpful move. But of course, how much we will miss it will depend on how generous the game will be with its boost energy. Along with Air Dash, I have also failed to see Drift Return, which would have been an amazing tool, especially during the curvy sections, and maybe then we wouldn't need those baby bumpers pushing you to the center, no? So far, the game feels like a mesh of Lost World and Generations to me. Speaking of Lost World, I should also mention that the homing attack only locks onto what you can see on screen and what Sonic can see wherever he is facing at that moment. If you see an enemy in front of you, but Sonic is looking towards the camera, he won't lock on. Vice versa, if Sonic is facing towards you and there is an enemy right behind the camera, so where Sonic is facing, but it is not visible on the camera, Sonic still won't lock on either. It's a nice safety net that will prevent you from doing unwanted homing attacks when only trying to do a double jump. Also, when you boost while in the air, Sonic will launch slightly upwards provided you do not boost during the descent of your jump. That is it for the modern demo. I don't have any problems with the linearity as I said in a stage where it teaches people how to jump and boost and Still, there are plenty of multiple paths that you can take advantage of in this very short stage. It can be completed within a minute as proved by other YouTubers. I can't really say much about Classic Sonic since we didn't really get to play a stage. He, he feels good though, that, that is all I can say. It, it's literally a 20 meter side-scroller boss map that 
you, you can't really do much with. As for Avatar's spaceport, I am genuinely impressed. If you watch the first episode of my Road to Sonic for the series, I am very skeptical about Bob. But his gameplay was actually fun enough. His controls are essentially the same as Sonic minus the boost. And I have to mention that Spaceport did not have the baby bumpers constantly trying to center you, so once again, I am assuming that was there in Green Hill Zone just because it was the tutorial stage. Bob made me realize another issue though. I am playing this on a PlayStation 4 and I am using the analog stick to navigate, but I feel like there is no real 360 degree control scheme, so every move you make feels a bit too stiff. You wanna make a quick correction to your line by going just a simple tick to the right. Well, chances are you will hit the other side of the road when trying to do that. I'm hoping this is just a technical issue with the demo and I'll keep hoping that we will get a full 360 control scheme for the release. For custom character, one of my biggest concerns have been eased though. In my custom character video I mentioned that we never see Bob curl up into a ball when jumping and the times we never saw that happen meant that we wouldn't be able to jump into the enemies. Thankfully that assumption is now proven wrong as Bob can actually destroy enemies just by jumping into them without the use of his attack or his homing zipline attack thingy. I would prefer a more thorough use of the quick time events though. Certain areas you have to manually lock onto zippable objects, but sometimes the game takes care of it for you. There are nice spectacles, but I would have preferred more of them going the quick time event way and making them slightly bit more interactive. But then again, it might just be that the QTEs are not present in the demo because I have seen some people get the train quick time event section that we have seen in one of the gameplay reveal videos, but still not receiving the quick time event prompt. So again, uh, take that with a grain of salt. And honestly, lacking idle animations and QTE prompts make me feel like we're actually playing quite an old build here. So. We don't have much to go on aside from just general conceptual design things. And overall, I honestly enjoyed the demo bar the one minute fucking limit, whatever that's there. While I have certain issues with certain changes, there is absolutely nothing game breaking going on here. It just feels like a fun adventure, as fun as a tutorial level teaching you how to jump and that is actually my main point here. I have seen Sonic players bash Green Hill for being extremely easy and I cannot stress enough that this is a very basic tutorial stage that is not even meant for you. You know how to play this game, you do not need this tutorial, you know how to jump, you know how to boost, you know how to do those two things at the same time, which if you watch videos on YouTube, a, a huge majority of people don't know how to do both of them at the same time and just mess things up. This is a necessary tutorial stage that is not meant for you. Even the Game Explain guy kept complaining about the stage, despite he himself not managing to time things properly, so... Apparently it's not an easy thing to do, we Sonic players were just getting accustomed to it over the years. And another small point, we all know how much people complained about the Green Hill Zone in the Sonic Generations demo, how linear it was, how easy it was, how quote unquote bland it was, that, that word is being used way too much. And in fact, Generations turned out to be one of the best Sonic games in the franchise, so even that has been proven time and time again, I have no idea why people love jumping on the gun and bashing the game when it comes to Sonic. So please people, stop doing that. As I said, while you shouldn't be praising this demo for being absolutely amazing, since it is not absolutely amazing, the opposite is also true. You cannot bash the game much based on what we see here. First off, seemingly it's an early build. Secondly, it is designed for people who can't climb stairs while chewing a gum, which is apparently quite a lot from the footages I am seeing from non-Sonic players 
who keep bumping into walls even after multiple tries because they can't understand how fast they are going when they attempt a full jump while boosting. I know this sounds like a simple concept to us, but for regular platformers, jumping into a Sonic game that goes so fast is not that easy, so please, let's chill out a little here. And actually that brings me to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this, make sure to hit that like button, share your own opinions in the comments, hit that subscribe button for more on Sonic Forces, the full playthrough of it when it comes out, and of course, a day one livestream here on my channel. You can follow me on facebook.com slash gamertalk and on twitter at gamertalk95. You can also support my channel by pledging to become a patron on patreon.com slash gamertalk for more content on Sonic. Take care everyone.